Hello YouTube, and welcome back to NBA Draft News for October 26th to October 27th. Every other day, releasing one of these videos, talking about all the NBA news articles that you'd ever want to look up or see into one video. I mean, I guess if you wanted to look at more personalized stuff for your team, that's not going to be in this video, but... All the general stuff, it's all going to be here in an audiobook that you can just put on in the background. And it's going to be like 30 minutes long. It's not even that bad, you know? You should subscribe if you like audiobooks and just listen to me talking. Like and subscribe really helps out. It's quick, free, and easy. And it's literally one click. If you don't believe me, go try it. Let's get into the video. So, talking about the Rockets in the thumbnail... They don't have a head coach yet, and we're going to have an article about that later, but kind of surprising considering they are, you know, a playoff team, and they're planning to make the playoffs again next year. They don't have a coach yet. So we'll start it off. Teams lobbying for a higher tax line in 2020 to 2021. So like a higher luxury tax line so they can pay more guys, but that's referring to mostly, you know, restricted free agency guys that you can take over, you know the normal cap so john isaac does not think he returned too soon from knee injury if you remember came back in the bubble and then tore his acl in the second seeding game so he said there's no regrets about coming back or the timing that he did i was just ready to play it was my decision at the end of the day and i went with it and i'm glad i did so yeah I bet some really, you know, American sports fans are like, it's because he didn't need, it's because he stood up, and uh, that's why he tore his ACL. It's because he stood up during the Pledge of Allegiance or something. Isn't that what happened? I'm pretty sure that's what happened, so. Cavs are going to work out Obi Toppin. I mean, I think we already knew that the Cavs liked Obi Toppin. But then, but they are saying that, among other guys, they're going to be looking at Okoro, Kung Wu, James Wiseman, Denny Dia in person workouts. So that's cool. And in person workouts played vital roles in drafting Colin Sex and Darius Scarl in the previous two years. So, I mean, they could use another long term front court piece, apparently, with, you know, Tristan Thompson in free agency and Andre Drummond on his player option. We got Pat Riley speaking with Lakers, or sorry, speaking with reporters, saying that an asterisk shouldn't be put next to the Lakers name, but they should put it next to the Heat for some reason. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why he's saying that. And then he identifying who's untouchables apparently Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Udonis Haslam. I don't know why that's an interesting article at all apparently. And then within the story league sources say that the Heat were to explore a trade for Victor Oladipo they wouldn't consider including Tyler Hero in the offer. And then Zeke Naji actually worked out for the Heat on Sunday so that would be an interesting fit as well. Um, yeah, the pure perimeter defensive center. He can hit those threes. So, I don't know how that would work next to Bam Adebayo. <laughs> but, I mean, I guess they had Myers Leonard doing pretty much the same thing. I mean, he wasn't really a perimeter defender, but, you know, pretty similar. Uh, we got Dan Craig, Kenny Atkinson... And Chauncey Billups are expected to join Ty Lue's coaching staff. So that's cool. Notes on the plan for the 2020-21 season. Um, nothing too interesting here. Uh, tipping off the season before Christmas would mean that they get, they get uh, Christmas games. So that's cool. That's more money. And then... People around the league don't expect pushback from the players' union to derail the proposed schedule. And then, assuming the plan gets go-ahead, free agent period and off-season will be accelerated in a major way. 
And that isn't great for, you know, teams with major roster turnover this fall. And then, while it sounds like the NBA is looking towards a December return, there's a lot of obstacles still in the way. And then teams looking for clarity about the salary cap and looking for projection. They're mainly saying that it'll be 115 and 21, 22. I thought it was 117 this year. That's a bit odd. It's a bit odd for that. Um, here's a Bucks offseason preview. Linked in the description. I'm not going to read it. Uh, Reggie Bullock. And looks like he's going to be retained on a team option with the Knicks. Okay. Then the Nets. The Nets can't really afford to let go of Joe Harris in free agency. They do have his bird rights. So it would be okay. And they would be able to sign him. And they estimate it's going to be around $15 million to pick up Joe Harris. 15 mil per year starting salary. So, um, Some guys projecting an examination of the sixth roster. And then they're talking about they should trade away Josh Richardson and Al Horford. Might have to throw in T. Stiebel. And then Alec Burks will leave in free agency apparently. And then Malachi Flynn, Devin Dotson worked out for the Raptors on Sunday. So it looks like they're targeting point guards. And then also Tyler Bay, which would be an interesting fit. Don't love saying it, but Tyler Bay kind of projects like Rondé Hall's Jefferson for the time being. So uh, Lakers are going to retain AD for the long term. And then the Jazz need to re-sign Jordan Clarkson. And then use their MLE on a wing player who can defend quicker players. Um, I'm thinking about taller wings, actually. I don't think you need to worry too much about quicker players. I mean, you already have Donovan Mitchell. Why do you need someone like that? And then they have Clarkson's bird rights. So they would be able to re-sign him on bird rights if they need to. And then... Mavericks draft picks this year could be their most valuable selections over the next five years. I mean, that's pretty obvious considering they have 18 and 31 in this year's draft. And they don't have first rounders in two of the next three drafts because of the Chris Stapps Porzingis trade. We have, oh, that was the same article. Starting next season. This is just a review of pretty much all the things we know. So you can read that. Nothing too interesting. NBA eyeing December 1st for start of training camps could be pretty interesting considering November 18th is the day of the draft. And that gives them, what, 13, 14 days? That's like two weeks. Less than two weeks. So that's interesting news to see there. Hawks shopping the number six pick. will push for playoffs in 2021. Okay, that should be pretty obvious. I guess they might not looking to be just, you know, trading down. They might also look to just trade for a big name player instead of trading down. So that could be interesting. And then they like to look for bargain deals and stuff like that. And then the cap room is good for the trade market, especially if pick number six, you know, throwing them into deals. The Bulls are likely targeting a lead playmaker in the, in the lottery pick in this year's draft, which is, I, I've said that over and over again, it's so obvious to me, um, it's ridiculously obvious to me, I mean, um, the Bulls probably won't have a chance to select Lamala Ball, but they could also go for Killian Hayes, Tyrese Halliburton, or Denny of Dia, who's not listed here, but, you know, he's the same type of player. And then, taking count to Ball... Edwards and James Wiseman probably the most likely to be drafted in the top three. And this guy talks about who they should draft. Cool. I do that too. Um, focusing on the top wing prospects in the draft rather than backcourt playmakers. Um, considers This guy considers whether trading down and selecting Devin Vassell might be the right play for the Bulls. They need a playmaker. Can we just... <laughs> why are we considering other options? It doesn't make too much sense to me. And then Dodd Young, Tomas Sonoransky look at looks like some possible trade options for the team. And both of them are signed last year, so. Um 
rumblings around the NBA suggest the Warriors and Hornets both covet, quote-unquote, center James Wiseman, according to Kevin O'Connor. And if Wiseman's atop each team's board, that means Charlotte might have to trade up to number one to have a shot at him. Okay, then. That would really suck. And I, I don't really love, you know, James Wiseman, Charlotte Hornets, for being honest. But anyways, yeah. And then apparently the Cavs are really high on Obi Toppin. And then we have sources tell O'Connor that the Pistons are interested in playmakers. Yeah. Then we have Pokusevsky has been linked to the Thunder. Um, literally, my Pokusevsky video yesterday talking about how he would be a really great fit about with Thunder, with Chris Paul, and if they re-signed Danilo Gallinari, standing out as two key mentors for Pokusevsky, you know, with the playmaking, ball handling, decision making, and high IQ that Chris Paul can bring while Danilo Gallinari can teach him how to score and shoot over top players and just drop buckets. I mean... <laughs> oh, it seemed like a perfect situation for Pokusevsky. And then uh, Tyrell Terry's generating buzz as a potential mid-first round pick. So that's cool, too. And then teams begin preparing for possibility free agency beginning 48 to 72 hours after draft. So that's going to be a lot of quick decision-making, a lot of quick thinking. You don't get that extra, like, two weeks to think about stuff like... How are we going to allocate the money, and how are we going to, like, who are we going to target, you know, because the draft has some variability to it, you know, who's going to be available on the board, who are you going to trade up to get, who are you going to trade down to get, and then you need to assess there, and then you need to move on to free agency, and then make all the decisions about your free, agent, free agents there, you know, <laughs> seems like a lot of work. Raptors, talking about if they're going to be playing in Toronto. If they're going someone else, somewhere else, they might be playing Buffalo, Newark, Kansas City, Fort Myers, apparently, or some of the cities that make sense for the Raptors. And maybe even sharing a home arena with one of the other NBA Eastern Conference teams. You know, since they're probably not going to be hosting any other major events recent, uh, you know, in the near future. Gordon Hayward seems likely to opt into his final year at the Celtics. This guy is talking about what he could do if he declines it. Kind of like Al Horford did a year ago. I mean, not a whole lot of people expected Al Horford to decline. So, Devin Vassell. Apparently, the Knicks are collecting a ton of information on Devin Vassell. That would be interesting, I would say. I think they should go for playmaker this year, considering how many talented players there are in the 2021 draft, and considering just, you know, it's a lottery. It's a lottery again next year. I mean, you could potentially win that number one overall pick and select Cade Cunningham, or you end up with one of the other guys. You don't want to bet on drafting a playmaker like Cade Cunningham when he's very likely to be the number one overall pick. And then you're, you're betting on maybe... Uh, Eight seven percent chance. So, I think you get your playmaker this year if you're the Knicks. And then, Nets might be targeting Isaiah Joe, which is a pretty interesting pick for sure. I think his stock's very crazy. I feel like he could end up even being drafted like number fourteen, number fifteen, but could drop all the way out of the draft entirely. So, that could be pretty interesting. Steve Nash is embracing the Nets championship expectations. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Ow! Sorry, the cat is digging her nails into my skin. So, you should subscribe because there's a cat here. And the Rockets' next head coach. There is a poll right here. Um, we'll view results to see how the users of this website think the Rockets are going to sign. And they're going to go with Jeff Van Gundy. And probably gonna have to agree with that i think they're a bit higher on jeff van gundy than john lucas obviously i'm not sitting in their front office or anything but you know i think it's really going to be at this point it's going to be jeff van gundy or steven silas says this random guy 
John Lucas was and is a good candidate that they very seriously considered and are considering, but I think it's those two. Says, who is this? Jonathan Fagan of the Houston Chronicle. I think it was a video too, so I mean, can't have him undermining my uh, marketing. So that's not going to be linked in the description. I'm joking. NBA Draft 2020 Boomer Bust Prospects. Lamella Ball could sh fall short of expectations while RJ Hampton might be a steal. Coming to you from CBS. So I've liked CBS articles a whole lot. Let's skip to Lamella Ball. Boom. Upside is obvious. 6 hit, 7 playmaker with elite court vision. Passing skills for Lamella Ball. And then maybe he hits a shot. So... You know, and then bust. I mean, you know, is he really worth the top three pick? And how is he going to do in the league? Lacks physicality. He's not an elite athlete. He could be the best player in the draft, but he could also be a disappointment. As a Kokoro, he's a great defender. And he can't shoot the three. And Okoro, I mean, he'll obviously have a long-term career because of his defense and his, you know, uh... Yeah, his athleticism. But if he can't improve his shot, he could turn into like a Tabith Cephalosha, Tony Allen, Michael Kidd Gilchrist, that sort of player. Killian Hayes, 6'5 point guard. You know, he can play make, but can he really shoot? We'll I have to see about that. And then he also is a bad defender, so that's his bust potential. Pokusevsky, boom, could be the best player in the draft, but. Yeah, bust, you know, he's just not good yet. And he's clearly a draft and stash type player who might never turn into anything in the NBA. And you are tangled in the microphone cord. Okay, we have freed the cat. And we got into RJ Hampton. Boom, tall and playmaking, and shot mechanics are making him seem like a better player. And if his shot improvement's real, he could be a pretty good steal. That was bars. Bust, you know, be wary of social media videos, and oh yeah, he was bad. <laughs> he was bad in Australia, so. Let's talk NBA draft rumors. James Wiseman might be coveted by Warriors and Hornets. I mean, I think we pretty much talked about this. And I think those could be some interesting players for the Hornets or the Wizards to trade up for. Or the Warriors. I misspoke. Let's talk NBC. Get rid of that. Let's get some zoom. That's getting cut off. Should I move this? I'll move this. I'm going to need to remember to move that back. Um, here's the... Bulls should explore trading down in the 2020 NBA draft. No. Uh, I think they need a point guard, and I don't think trading down is the option. Um, actually, let me fill the screen with this. Uh, I don't really think they should trade down. I mean, I think they should just pick their point guard, get out, and, you know, not throw it all away. I mean, you just got the number four overall pick. Draft your point guard. I'm not going to read that article. Hollander is skeptical about the Warriors NBA draft target, Danny Fdia. I, I guess he's just struggled to get a, too excited about him. I just don't think quality of the league is that good. I'm deba debating whether I had him too low from just the perspective that he's big and can handle the ball. He does have those two things going for him, but I also think he has to be able to shoot. I think he can shoot, and I think that's what people are going to underrate. And, you know, he's in international player he's ultra aggressive he's super confident and he has that sort of it swagger to his game but to excel in the nba he has to be a good three-point shooter and i think he could be a good three-point shooter and warriors might work i think it might work for sure warriors are going to take a chance on wise men and not of dia and this is actually a joke article because this guy's quoting Kendrick freaking Perkins. Yes, this is his reliable source. It's Kendrick Perkins. It's like quoting Wikipedia if Wikipedia had no money. You know? <laughs> yeah. 
I'm not gonna read this. You quoted freaking Kendrick Perkins as your primary source. I'm not gonna read your article. Anyways, let me let me do an outro right here. Thanks for watching the video. You should like and subscribe if you're still here because it's free and these videos are good and you probably like the video if you're still here. So I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.